Just because you filed an IFR flight plan doesn't mean you have to get a clearance and depart under IFR. If the weather conditions permit, you could pick up your IFR clearance while en route, having begun the flight VFR. So here we are, circling the town of Roswell, New Mexico, looking for crashed UFOs at 4,500 feet. We're VFR now, but we have an IFR flight plan on file. We filed, before we departed Roswell Airport, an IFR flight to Hobbs Airport to the southeast at 7,000 feet, via this route here, which includes Victor 68. So we started our flight VFR, taking off from Roswell and circling the town to the north. And now we're ready to head back to our home base to the southeast, and we want to activate our IFR flight plan. So let's switch over to the IFR en route low chart for the area. Our flight plan has us joining Victor 68 and flying southeast. We're not talking to anyone, so the first thing we'll need to do is get a hold of air traffic control. There's a few ways to find the right frequency. The chart supplement page for the nearby airport will list communications frequencies. Here's the appropriate frequency for Roswell Approach, 119.6. If we have ForeFlight, we can get the same information by looking at the airport info screen and finding the approach frequency. If we don't have any of that on board, we could contact Flight Service on 122.2 or a locally listed frequency, give them our position, and ask the appropriate frequency to activate our flight plan. Now that we have our frequency, we'll dial that into our COM1, 119.6. We'll contact them by saying, Roswell Approach, Cessna 9334 Hotel is 10 northeast of the field, looking to pick up IFR to Hobbs. ATC will respond with, November 9334 Hotel, Roswell Approach, Squawk 3201 and IDENT. So we'll punch our squawk code into the box and hit IDENT so the controller can find us on their screen. Once they've identified us, the controller will say, November 34 Hotel, radar contact 9 north of Roswell, 4,500 feet. Are you able to maintain your own terrain and obstruction clearance until reaching 5,400 feet? Hold up, what was that last part? Can we maintain terrain and obstruction clearance? I thought that was the controller's job before IFR. Actually, isn't the whole point of getting our instrument rating to be able to fly through clouds and not have to maintain our own terrain and obstruction clearance? Well, not really. Let's have a look at the en route chart again. We're circling around at 4,500 feet VFR, not bugging anyone. Our IFR route has us taking Victor 68, but we have to get there first. Because we're off route, we might want to have a look at the off route obstruction clearance altitude for this sector, the Oroka, which is 7,900 feet. That's pretty high up, and this sector is really large. Do we really need to get all the way up there? Have a look around, it's pretty flat in this part of New Mexico, except for that one peak way out to the southwest. In fact, that's the highest point in this map quadrant, and it's on the opposite side of Roswell from where we're headed. No factor. ATC is actually able to slice this area up into smaller segments and assign minimum vectoring altitudes based on terrain in those smaller areas. In the area where we're flying, the MVA is only 5,400 feet well below the Oroka for the whole quadrant. Let's picture these altitudes from the side. The Oroka is at 7,900 feet, high enough to give us clearance over the highest obstacle in the quadrant. The minimum vectoring altitude for our area is 5,400 feet, and we want to climb to 7,000, our filed altitude, and join Victor 68. So ATC wants to make sure we can get above this minimum vectoring altitude. The controller can't see clouds or obstacles, so below the MVA, there's no way to guarantee clearance. So it's up to us to not smack into anything until we're up high enough to get a vector that assures us protection. So when the controller asks if we can maintain clearance until 5,400 feet, this is why. It's a perfectly clear day, we have no problem with this, so we reply in the affirmative. And we'll get an instruction to climb and receive our IFR clearance. Here's what that will look like. Cessna 34 Hotel, cleared to Hobbs Airport is filed. Climb and maintain 7,000, leaving 5,400, fly heading 150 to intercept Victor 68. So we'll start our climb, read back the clearance. Cleared to Hobbs Airport is filed, climb and maintain 7,000 feet. After 5,400, fly heading 150 to intercept Victor 68. And ATC will say, Cessna 34 Hotel, read back correct. Sometimes the best laid plans don't always work out. 
Here now we're approaching our destination of Suffolk Exec from the southeast. We're VFR and don't have any flight plan on file. Unfortunately, it looks like the clouds are a lot lower than forecast and we'll need an IFR clearance and an approach to land at Suffolk. We can get what's called a pop-up IFR clearance, which is where we request an IFR flight plan directly from the controller rather than file it via flight service or online from the ground. We may already be talking to approach if we're on VFR flight following or something, or we might be calling them cold for the first time. If it's our first contact with ATC, the old formula for radio still works. Who you are, where you are, and what do you want? Norfolk Approach, Cessna 9334 Hotel, is 15 miles north of Elizabeth City. Request pop-up IFR clearance to Suffolk Exec, Sierra Fox Track, Quebec. It's important to tell ATC you want a pop-up clearance, or to somehow let them know that you don't already have an IFR clearance filed, so they don't go fumbling through their flight strips to try to find you. Workload permitting, they will oblige your request, assign you a squat code, and they will often ask if the aircraft and pilot are IFR equipped and current. With that out of the way, they'll issue a clearance by saying, Cessna 34 Hotel, cleared to Suffolk Executive Airport via Radar Vectors Direct, descend and maintain 4000, fly heading 310. And of course, we'll read that back. Notice no talk about terrain or obstruction clearance if we're already above those minimum IFR altitudes. Getting a pop-up IFR is a great tool if things start turning south for us, but there are a few things to keep in mind when trying to get one. Besides the fact that we've sort of outsourced our planning responsibilities for filing IFR to ATC so they'll handle them for us. First, we need to be out of any active MOAs. ATC can't fly IFR traffic through special use airspace that's hot, so if we're VFR in an MOA, we may have to wait until we're out. Next, there are traffic separation minimum under IFR, such as 1,000 feet vertical and 3 miles lateral. We don't have any of that in VFR besides the requirement not to trade paint with any other aircraft. So ATC may need to wait until after we're properly spaced to clear us. Finally, there's this issue with the minimum altitudes. The unfortunate scenario would be us finding ourselves scud running VFR below clouds, trying to get over the Blue Ridge Mountains here, when we finally give up and ask for a pop-up. When ATC asks us if we can maintain our own terrain and obstruction clearance to 4,000 feet, and we look around and reply no, they'll tell us to maintain VFR and we're on our own. So that's a rundown on picking up an IFR clearance when we're already in flight under VFR. Filing IFR and departing VFR can be a great way to manage weather risks while still maintaining control over your own route at first. In addition to that, pop-up IFRs can be real conveniences, but make sure you're not in a position where being denied the clearance doesn't leave you without a plan B. If this was helpful, please click subscribe so that you could stay up to date on every new training video coming out each Tuesday and Friday and get access to posts and articles on the community page that'll take your training even further. It just takes one click and it's so worth it.